And suddenly, Kirby. That's how the recent release date trailer felt for Kirby and the Forgotten Land. The game was first revealed back in September, Nintendo was completely quiet about it, and out of nowhere, they declare it's coming in March. There's only two months to wait, but it's going to feel agonizing with just how good it looks. But I'm here to help make that wait a little easier, as there's so much to uncover within this trailer. Of course, that might make the wait even harder. Huh. Oh well. I still want to do this deep dive analysis and dig up more examples of just how fun this game looks. The trailer begins, appropriately enough, with what appears to be the opening cutscene. Kirby is taking flight aboard the Warp Star as he travels across Pop Star with its grassy arches and natural look. It's a sharp contrast to the Forgotten Land, which features more realistic locations overtaken by nature. But if I had to guess, this takes place just before our only other look at this cutscene. The fox enemies from the previous trailer are rounding up Waddledees into the recognizable cages, which are all carried by dark birds. Presumably, Kirby sees this and tries to rescue them, but is shot down by this new enemy where he eventually ends up washing onto the beach. Nintendo certainly isn't saying much, as all they mention on the official website is saving the Waddledees from an enemy force known as the Beast Pack, while joined by the flying chinchilla-like creature now known as Elphalyn. The question is, does Kirby chase them off-planet, or is the Forgotten Land some unknown part of Popstar? Unfortunately, there's no real clue to this question, as the trailer switches to showing off more copy abilities. First up is more of Bomb and the returning Bomb Bowl move. It's basically the same as before, used here to lower Shotzos into a pit and make the nearby star coins easier to collect. He actually did this once before, as another Shotzo can be seen in an earlier pit. The only other thing of note are the metal boxes farther along the path, where a Sir Kibble waits behind. Next is the reveal of the returning Tornado ability, and it works how one would expect. More interesting is the return of the anti-Kirby graffiti from the first trailer's mall, while the Poppy Brothers Jr. pair uses the environment to roll and separate their bombs. Not that it presents much of a problem, as Kirby's tornado attack tears through them and the box. At the top of this slope is an arch and a pair of park benches. While I originally thought this level could be part of the ocean area due to its stone structures and piping, it's possible this decoration leads to a park in a city level. After this is a return to the desert area, but with the added confirmation that yes, it was once an oasis full of water. In this case, Kirby might be in some kind of resort as he faces off against a Sir Kibble in a dried out pool. The only other things in this pool is a small lizard and globs of poison. But this does make me wonder, could this be an indication that the poison ability will return? It hasn't been used since Planet Robobot, so it could make for a fun addition. Either way, Kirby is using the newly confirmed hammer ability, which isn't too surprising, while a larger, brown version of the fox enemy walks in the background. But did you notice something else? There's a scandal on screen. Next to this recliner is a martini glass. Implied alcohol in my Nintendo game? The shame. The hammer gets another location in which to shine as Kirby explores a thin waterway and somehow manages to climb far above, which is actually impressive because remember, Kirby does have a height limit on his flying in this game. But reaching this area with hammer allows him to smack down a peg, which then opens a secret door in the stone wall. Now, I have a theory about what this is, but let's save it until after the rundown of copy abilities. Besides, we get another look at the black crocodile enemy from the first trailer and how he actually scans the area in front of him, specifically searching for Kirby. Most early Kirby enemies tend to be a bit passive, but this guy's looking for a bite. And you will have to avoid him, as this looks to be the proper way through the level if the ladders leading out of the water just ahead are any indication. The next returning ability shown is Crash, and it seems to be just as explosive as ever, though unfortunately the trailer cuts away before it's showing if it still has the same screen clearing power. The shockwave indicates yes, but none of the enemies react, so it's impossible to confirm if the enemies in the water will get hit too. At the very least, a new seal enemy carrying a ball is shown, and that's just adorable. On the mysterious side of things, there's a platform in the back with a hole in the middle, and I can't be sure if it leads to some underground area or just changes up the scenery. I'm leaning toward the latter as the path does continue beyond it. The final two copy abilities shown in the trailer are both brand new. First up is Drill, and I adore its little visor to keep dirt out of Kirby's eyes when underground. And underground is definitely the name of the game, as it allows Kirby to dig into the earth before popping back up at a considerable height. Not only does this take out the Scarfy, but it unearths a red star coin for Kirby to bank. In the background is the continuation of a mystery from last trailer. 
the diamond piece. This one is orange and hanging out next to a mole enemy. Unfortunately, there's just nothing more to really glean from it. But that mole is absolutely what grants drill, and a better look is provided right away as Kirby shows off another move. This one has him circle the mole to create an explosive fissure. I do wonder how large this circle could be, but it's a great attack that could only be done in 3D. I just appreciate the little moments where Kirby is reimagined with this new dimension. There's also glowing patches to the left with some small goodies waiting to be unearthed. It's a good taste of what Drill has to offer, but my biggest question is how it works underwater. This demonstration is in the water level, so will Drill be more potent and propel Kirby even faster through it? Or will it disappear in favor of his blown bubbles? I'm honestly not sure. Finally, there's the ability that everyone is talking about and that I called in my previous deep dive. Yep, Kirby's got a gun, courtesy of these new dog enemies and pith helmets and the ranger ability. And fittingly enough, Kirby gets one too. Sadly, his gun is more pistol-like than a full-on blunderbuss, but it gets the job done. This gun fires stars at enemies as a standard attack and even has a rising sweep when used in the air. It seems pretty potent and can even be charged for a massive star attack to wipe out most of what lies in his way. I get the feeling this one will be a fan favorite. But I want to return to that secret area that Kirby found earlier. What does it lead to? It could be a cache of star coins or an extra waddle dee to rescue. Or maybe it's how Kirby reaches secret levels. At a certain point in the trailer, Nintendo finally reveals the world map, and it is big. This also confirms a few points for me. One is that the overgrown city is the first world in the game, and each level shows off something from the locations shown up to this point. First is the normal city with the bridge, then there's the tunnel under construction, next is a hilltop with buildings and beside that is the parking garage, and finally there's the mall where the gorilla boss is fought, marking him as the first in the game. So theoretically, this indicates that there are five levels in each world. However, there's a twist to this. Each of the five main levels are noted by a red circle and dotted line, but running alongside them are seven smaller areas, each marked by a star. Well, I say a star, but there is some resemblance to the dimensional rifts from Return to Dreamland. Maybe it's one of those portals that await behind the rock exit that Kirby found. And these levels likely contain extra Waddle Dees to rescue. That said, five main levels and seven smaller areas seem to be the consistency. As Kirby reaches the water area, marking it as World 2, it's possible to spot five more levels marked by a red dot. There's the one next to Kirby, the three in the water, and the last on the other side. Dotted around them are six more smaller areas, though it's possible that a seventh is near the farthest main level. This could indicate the trend of five main and seven side levels will continue throughout the game, though naturally nothing set in stone. Another big question is how many worlds there will be in total. As far as themes, the trailers have shown the desert, a snowy area, a theme park, and possibly the underground, which only has one minor scene from this trailer. Including the known worlds, that would bring the grand total to six, and I'm sure there's more that hasn't been revealed. While both Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot contained seven worlds, I think the Forgotten Land will take a page from Return to Dreamland and feature eight. I don't have a particular reason, it's just kind of a gut feeling. So let's take a look at what some of these worlds contain before moving on. First up is what I presume to happen after selecting a level. It won't be instantaneous, but it does feel like a nice touch to have Kirby descend into the level on the Warp Star. There's not much to say beyond that, so instead I want to shift your attention to the possible cave world. The only parts shown are back to back, with the first being this rough, doll-like design of Elephant inside a cage. But what is its purpose? I don't believe it's a replacement for an already rescued Waddle Dee. The way the scene plays out, the cage rotates as if to hide something before zooming in on the doll as if to emphasize a big reveal. Based on this, I believe that Elephant will get kidnapped at some point and Kirby goes to rescue it. At one point when he believes he's found him, instead he'll find this doll. And the one who set it up is likely this new boss that is never fully shown. The only glimpse provided is a set of rock scales, digging claws, large lips, and a single buck tooth. So perhaps some kind of armadillo or shrew? There's also some kind of card in the background that seems vaguely related to the theme park, so it's possible that this underground area is simply part of that world theme. Unfortunately, there's just not enough information to fully tell. Thankfully, a much better look is provided for the second world's boss, Tropic Woods, a palm tree take on good old Wispy. 
and just look at him. He's got a little goatee. It's adorable. He's also a little more proactive than Wispy as he sends his roots after Kirby. While I wish there was more to see, that's unfortunately it. But at least Nintendo UK provided the name for him, as well as the Gorilla Boss, who is known as Goromondo. Not sure how a tree becomes part of a beast pack, but you can't exclude a classic. The trailer closes with some of the absolutely gorgeous vistas that we'll get to see. These include a foggy, frozen over bridge that's absolutely massive, a garage that leads to the amusement park at night, putting Kirby right next to the Ferris wheel, and a sandy incline leading to what may be an old ocean resort in the desert. The lighting on the last scene in particular is breathtaking, but this is only a taste of the possibilities. For now, it's time to return to gameplay, and that includes co-op. Now, there's not too much to say on it, but seeing Bandana D back is always a treat. And unsurprisingly, it looks like Forgotten Land supports drop-in, drop-out co-op based on the celebration pose the two do in the middle of the level. More importantly, this is a good look at how Spear has been tweaked to better work in 3D. The first occurs when Bandana D throws his spear. A display of its arc is shown for the briefest of moments, but it is there to help guide players. Could it be possible to extend the arc by holding the button down, or does the display just stay on screen longer when holding the button? Hard to say, but the Waddlecopter just got deadlier as it now sends down a rain of spears onto enemies, allowing it to combat opponents at any height. And it's fitting that Bandana D is your partner in this considering it's Waddle Dees that need rescuing. But what the Waddle Dees do next is maybe my favorite thing in the entire trailer. However, there is a little build up to it. After the opening cutscene showing the Waddle Dees capture, the trailer shifts to show Kirby greeting Elephant with the Warp Star in the background. This is the state in which Kirby first discovers Waddle Dee Town. That means that rescuing them not only opens up more shops, it gradually restores the village as well. The big question is how gradual the change will be. Is what's shown in the trailer the final look, or could it become even grander? How many rescued Waddle Dees are needed to trigger a change? At the very least, it's farther along than the screenshot featured on the official Kirby site that shows the town restored and with a few shops, but no second level with a Colosseum. But I'll get to those locations soon enough. First of all, I do believe this is where Kirby first ends up after landing on the beach in the first trailer. That made it seem like Kirby goes directly to the city, but I was positive some kind of tutorial area was next instead. That feels all but confirmed after seeing this. I believe Kirby will wake up, go through the tutorial section, and eventually arrive here, meeting Elphalin for the first time and setting this up as the game's hub. Why else would the Warp Star be here? This then shifts to Kirby discovering a caged trio of Waddle Dees in the water area in what looks to be Tropic Woods Arena. I'm still unsure if Waddle Dee trios are exclusive to boss fights or if they appear at the end of every level, but I do love Kirby's happy little greeting to them. Also, I'm not sure if it's intentional or not, but the rock formation at the back left looks exactly like a face. Is this on purpose, or just a weird coincidence? Either way, my curiosity to whether Waddle Dees are found all over or just at the end of levels remains unanswered in the next scene. Kirby rescues a single caged one, and it immediately becomes a celebration between Kirby, the Waddle Dee, and Elphalin, but it stops before anything else is shown. It's really starting to feel like Hal is teasing me with this. Fortunately, all is forgiven with the first look at the restored town. There's just something pleasant about it with the Waddle Dees conversing, sitting at the table together, reading on a bench, running a shop, and even hanging out with a scholar's cap. Each building has some role to play, with some being more obvious than others. Starting from the left is a theater where players can likely rewatch cutscenes, though it would be fun if there was some other kind of cinematic reward. Maybe take a page from Ape Escape and see the Waddle Dees act out their own movies, or maybe what life with King Dedede is like. It probably won't happen, but I can dream. Next to the theater, tucked in the corner, are the gotcha machines. There are two from this angle, but later on, Kirby is only next to one, though that could be due to the angle. The detail on it is fantastic though, as the figures that can be obtained through the gotcha are all shown on the machine. From left to right, these include Kirby, Elphalin, Big Kirby, a Waddle Dee in a cage, the new fox enemy, and Goromondo. Considering what's shown in the Volume 1 next to Kirby's new figure, it's possible that more gotcha machines appear after each boss and the characters from that section can then be obtained. That said, what currency does the machine take? 
is it possible that the star coins are for more than just getting Kirby lives? Could lives be gone and they're instead used for this and the other games around the town? That would be a great push forward for the series. But even just here, having a currency seems to give the town more importance. The next building is a lot harder to parse. It features a hat and a roll of parchment while more hats sit in the windows. At first, I thought this could be a store to choose copy abilities, and while that is viable, I also wonder if Kirby's newfound currency could be used to buy cosmetics and colors of some kind. That does seem to fly in the face of the change when using a copy ability, but maybe they'd only apply to base Kirby. I mean, people love seeing Kirby in different hats, why not make it a reward? Continuing on, there's a cafe, and the trailer does show what Kirby will do there. He'll be put to work, distributing either Maxim Tomatoes or energy drinks to the waiting Waddle Dees. But the game does seem rather easy, as the player is granted 15 seconds to give the right item. I hope this just means that this is the first level of the minigame and becomes more challenging as time goes on. Again, tying into the possible inclusion of currency, this could be a way for Kirby to earn more, and the harder difficulties grant more star coins. Finally, this scene shows the very obvious Colosseum at the top, and this is where Kirby fights Meta Knight. It's not surprising he's there, but I was shocked to see nothing but Waddle Dees in the crowd. But upon spotting the Colosseum, it all clicked into place. This is the perfect spot for Kirby to rematch bosses from this game, while also bringing in legacy bosses from past games. There's Meta Knight, of course, but I wouldn't be surprised to see DDD and maybe even DeRoach, Magalore, Krakow, and many others to showcase what their boss fights would be like in 3D. That's the different take on it, but it's extremely likely that this is simply the new form the arena and true arena takes in this game. Either way, it'll be the location of the biggest challenges in the Forgotten Land. The trailer then shows off a few more angles, including close-ups of the hat store and cafe, before throwing a curveball. Kirby fishing with Bandana D. At face value, it doesn't seem to have much purpose beyond looking cute. But when taken with my other suggestions for the town, a fishing competition could be another way to earn star coins. And going off that idea, what if the fishing hat Kirby is wearing isn't just for fishing? What if he was already wearing that as part of the hat store? After all, Bandana D doesn't change his look. I could be absolutely wrong, but I really hope I'm right. That said, where does this take place? It could be on the second level to the right of the Colosseum, but the final scene of Kirby on the roof proves it's behind the building he's on. After all, it features the exact same stump. But this scene showcases another new building that could only be glimpsed at during the closer look at the cafe before. It appears to be a Waddle Dee postal service with packages and wrapping nearby. There's even tape for him to wrap with right then and there. Could this be part of the online component that's indicated in the trailer? So far, Nintendo has only indicated it's to compare scores with friends through the wise Waddle Dee and the Scholar Cap, so this is all just more guesswork at this point. If the packages can be sent to friends, maybe that includes costumes or the gotcha figures? If not, then maybe Waddle Dees can be sent out to explore and ship helpful healing items to Kirby for use later on? It really is difficult to nail down a purpose for this place. The final building that can be seen is something on the upper level with a flower logo. While once again I'm unsure of what Kirby could do with a shop like that, my best guess is that there's some kind of customization to the town itself. Maybe Kirby can change what flowers bloom or where they're placed. Or it could go even further and allow Kirby to choose the style of buildings and what kind of recreation facilities could be placed for the Waddle Dees to enjoy. That's what I love about this Waddle Dee town so much. There's tons of possibilities, and many of them remove the need for a menu revealing some new thing that was unlocked. Instead, it's all in-game for the player to enjoy, and the progress through the Forgotten Land is reflected in the town. While I'm still not sure if this could topple Planet Robobot as my absolute favorite Kirby game, this looks like a major step forward for the series. I can't wait until March 25th to finally play it. But what do you think of this updated look at Kirby in the Forgotten Land? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this deep dive, please consider subscribing to Good Vibes Gaming, hitting the like button, and ringing that bell. We also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash dvgaming with plenty of extra perks. Until next time, bye!